when you're facing an unexpected uh, situation, you will have one option, which is to improvise. As I recall, um, we thought we had a few weeks, and so we had to radically change what we were going to do because the students were going to go home in a few weeks. And so we thought we could prepare them with materials to take with them, for instance, because one of the problems if, if they went remote is all the tools and things we'd set up here, access to, say, the Maker Lab, they weren't going to have access to 3D printers anymore, any of those things we'd carefully planned. I always, when I teach, I think of the classroom as, um, as a space uh, where I hope unexpected things can happen. We learned the students were virtually leaving, I think, the next day. And um, then it changed from being kind of, um, how, how can we deal with this class? I remember spending the whole weekend preparing materials for them and it was just all wasted because um, they couldn't take these materials with them anymore. Somehow we didn't know why we, I mean, we wanted to create this team, but it turned out to be a very, um, the right direction <laughs> to follow. In an emergency, what you need, all the research on disasters, emergencies show that you need cooperation and a team spirit. And, you know, we'd happily prepared that. We figure out that another way for the students to go through this uh, was to make them feel that we are all together. We're gonna, together we're gonna find a solution. And together we're going to um, form, we're gonna help each other and we're gonna focus on what is possible. Your house, the room, your bedroom is now your working space. And so I think it does change your orientation to your everyday life when you think that every sounding you're hearing everyday life, hey, there's, a bit, there's a, obviously a source of that sound. Let's think of that in an imaginative way. And could it be an instrument? And what would that look like? And I think that uh, the students um, suddenly didn't feel that they are locked or trapped in their own home, but uh, they, it was like as if this room was expanded and now it becomes their, their new studio space. We were dealing with uh, different time zones. We had students in China, in Thailand, myself was in Switzerland, some of the students were in California. I will see somebody that was falling asleep and for the first time it was okay to feel tired in class. I think we got to share our human side uh, during this time period, which hasn't ha happened before. When we went remote, all the students, you know, scattered, that actually the Zoom technology, I felt, worked pretty well. And we could do the reading and discussion part of the class. We'd formulated the end of the project being either exhibits or a little concert with these homemade instruments. But we'd also planned that they'd make a video of their instrument. And we we're very fortuitous because everyone's got a video camera in their iPhones these days. These videos became more important because we couldn't do things like uh, an exhibit or a concert anymore. So we worked towards those final videos of the project. I would like to add that this situation, it, it was asking for improvisation, but it was also asking for stretching your imagination. You kind of learn from experience what works and what doesn't work. And what was so fun about this class was I challenged to do new kind of things. So that got, took me out of my comfort zone. I'm gonna, we're gonna teach this class again. I asked myself, what have I learned from that experience? How could we do things a bit better um, and differently? When you open the possibility of anything that can function as an instrument it becomes part of your life becomes part of the society that was something that would never have happened if we wouldn't have to deal with that unexpected situation Thank you.